Here we have another vector. Uh, we have a vector that has a length of 6 and is pointing in a direction that's 20 degrees above the horizontal here. Um, we're going to continue to use these as our positive directions. So you're not going to be allowed here to choose your own positive directions. I'm telling you, these are the positive directions. Uh, please pause the video and break this vector into components. Try to do that using the same notation that I demonstrated on the board for the previous problem. Try to be as careful about that as you can. Alright, first of all we're going to have to draw a right triangle indicating the components. We want to draw a right triangle that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse and whose legs are parallel to the axes. And it would be nice to include the angle that we were given. This is a right triangle that uses the original overall vector as the hypotenuse. Each of the legs is parallel to one of these axes and we're including the original angle that we were given. Uh, let's label these sides. We should call this V sub x because this side is parallel to our x-axis. We should label this V sub y because this side is parallel to the y-axis. And this is part of the notation that you should use. Always try to label every part of your diagram. Put in all the labels in every part of your diagram. Ah, now we should definitely now put in arrows for the components. The components are useless without arrows. Well, the overall vector is pointing up and to the right. So our components should be pointing up and to the right. We can use an asterisk to remind ourselves of the information we were given and the angle that we were focusing on. OK, uh, and we can label the hypotenuse, the adjacent side, and the opposite side. I think now we're ready to use trigonometry to find the opposite and the adjacent sides. Now, because we were given the hypotenuse, we're not going to use the tangent. We're going to use sine and cosine that deal with the hypotenuse. We could start by writing sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, but we know that um, we could just jump to these equations here, so that's what I'm going to do now. In order to figure out the adjacent side, That would be the, hop, the hypotenuse times what? Should I use the sine or the cosine here? Well, cut. The adjacent side comes from the cosine. So here's our general formula. Always a good idea to write the general formula first and then plug in. What can I plug in for the adjacent side? Well, our symbol for that is V sub x. Although not quite. Remember that this stands for the length of the adjacent side. Well, that means the magnitude of that component. So I hope that when you tried this problem, you conscientiously used a dot in this step. I strongly encourage you to use this notation. Uh, now the length of the hypotenuse, we could plug in V, but why not just plug in the number? The number is 6. And what should we plug in for the uh, theta? Well, our angle is 20. And now we can use our calculator and solve this in one step. Six times the cosine of 20 is 5.6. And don't get lazy. Keep putting in the dot. This is still the magnitude of V sub x, so keep putting in the dot. Now, this is not really a good final answer, because what we ultimately want to get is the full component, including the sine. Well, our positive direction is right, and the component is pointing right. So we put in a positive sign. Right is positive, the component is positive, so it's positive. Why did I put a sign in here and I didn't put a sign in over here? Because here we were focusing just on the magnitude, indicated by the dot. Here we're focusing on the signed component, indicated by no dot. Now we want to try to figure out the length of the opposite side. Well, of course, we're going to use the hypotenuse to find the opposite side. Uh, but should we use the sine or the cosine? Where, well, so, the opposite side comes from the sine. 
Remember that if you ever forget this formula, you can easily figure it out again by writing down that the sine of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse and cross multiplying. But we're now just going to go straight to this formula. What should I plug in for the length of the opposite side? Well, the length of the opposite side is not v sub y. It's the magnitude of v sub y. Magnitudes indicate lengths. Because uh, a length has to be positive, and a magnitude has to be positive. Uh, the length of the hypotenuse was 6. Theta is 20. Again, I definitely recommend writing the general formula first and then plugging in. On our calculator, we can do 6 times the sine of 20. That's 2.1. As I've mentioned before, I'm not worrying about significant figures in these videos. I'm just going to round off to what feels good. I'm not going to round off to the correct number of significant figures. Should I put a sign in here? Well, I should not put a sign here because this is just the magnitude. Magnitude don't get signs. They're always positive. But what number should I write down over here? Well, over here I've got the symbol without a dot. Now I want to show the actual direction as well. Um, so I'll write that up here. So that would be... 2.1 v sub y equals 2.1 and what's the sign? well up is our positive direction and the component is pointing up so it's pointing in the positive direction when you're dealing with a signed component you have to indicate the sign even for a positive number you have to indicate the sign even for a positive number when you're in dealing with a signed component since up was our positive direction and the component was pointing up, this came out to be positive. All right, now we have our answer. Um, remember, why do we not put a sign over here? Because this refers to the overall vector. Well, overall vectors never have signs because they're not parallel to either the x or the y axes. Um, this is just a magnitude. But we don't really need a dot for this because, again, there's nothing this could refer to but the magnitude. Um, so there's no point using a dot for the overall vector. We don't need two separate symbols for the overall vector because the overall vector is never going to get a sign. We only need separate symbols for the components because the components can either be signed values or non-signed values. So that's when it's helpful to use the dot. Well, you should ask yourself two questions. First of all, you should ask yourself whether you got this right. But you should also ask yourself whether you got it right using the notation that I've been demonstrating on the board. Because again, this is a really easy question. You're going to see harder questions, and what's going to save you there is having a good, consistent notation that helps you to avoid mistakes and careless mistakes. So again, I'm still encouraging you to try to use all the notation I'm suggesting here. Um, and maybe I should uh, apologize now if I'm coming off as a little bit bossy or even a little bit rude. I know that I'm kind of insisting and hectoring on doing it my way. Uh, so I apologize if I'm coming off a little bit bossy or rude um, about that. Uh, but again, I'm intending these videos for people who are finding this material to be difficult. And if you find the material to be difficult, one way that you can make it a lot less difficult is to adopt the notation that I'm demonstrating uh, on the board. Uh, but I know that most people um, do not naturally adopt notation. Most people are naturally pretty careless about their notation. That's the reason why they find the problems difficult in the first place. Um, if you were the type of person who was careful about notation, these problems would already be a lot easier for you. Um, people who are all automatically careful about notation gen generally find physics pretty easy, and they're probably not watching these videos in the first place. Uh, the people who tend to find physics difficult are people who find it difficult to focus on the notation. Um, so to help you focus on the notation, I'm going to keep kind of hectoring you and reminding you, and maybe even being uh, slightly rude, um, just to call your attention to the fact that it's not enough to get these right. You have to get, use good notation that will help you to get harder and harder questions right as well. Um, so I'm going to continue um, to remind you and maybe even insist and be a little bit rude about trying to use the notation uh, that I'm demonstrating on the board. And I hope uh, that you'll, you'll find that helpful and that you'll forgive me if, uh, if I'm coming off uh, like a jerk.